Module 1, Introduction to Software Engineering. Upon completion of this course, you'll be able to describe what software engineering is, describe the myths of software development, distinct socio-technical systems, and to distinct critical systems. Nowadays, more systems, business systems in particular, are software controlled. Software engineering is about professional software development that involves knowing the theories, methods, tools within the ethics of the profession to ensure the successful development of a software in a heteros heterogeneous environment in face of changes, constraint of cost, diversity, and the need to ensure security or trust. This figure provides the overview of all the concepts, bodies, that we need to understand in software engineering. In the beginning, developing software is an act of programming. Those days, software is much smaller, probably standalone, and used by one individual. Nowadays, the situation is different. A software is often connected to another software through the network, and it is being used by more than one individual. It is used by an organization, by different levels of users. And the computers involved in the system could be of different platform, Unix, Windows, different flavors of Linux. It could be an Android platform on a smartphone host. The system could be on the cloud. This is what we mean by heterogeneity, many types, many genus. This makes building software in such an environment more complex, probably more expensive, and facing high risk of failure. This is not new. This problem has been identified as early as 1960s. The term software crisis refers to difficulties in development of large complex systems, systems used in organizations. To address this crisis, software should not be an art of programming anymore. It should be engineered. Engineering approach was proposed to manage the cost and to ensure more reliability, to ensure higher risk is controlled, resulting in greater chance of success. Thus, the term software engineering was first used. Many suggested that it came from the 1968 NATO conference on software engineering. Nowadays, web systems, big data, industrial revolution 4.0 introduce even more complexity, thus warranting for software engineering. So ask yourself, software engineering or software art to manage the complexity of today's computer systems? According to Ian Somerville, an author of software engineering book used in many colleges, and tertiary institution. Software engineering is an engineering discipline 
that is concerned with all aspects of software production from early stages of the system specification through to maintaining the system after it has gone into use. So the key point here is software engineering is an engineering discipline. It involves process, standard process, best practices, less of individualism, but more of the process. And this process is not just for the production of the software, but all aspects of the software, from specification, on drawing boards, on papers, until the software is delivered, being used, being maintained, being upgraded, until it is retired from use. All aspects of software production. So this is the definition that we are going to use for this course and the one that you should remember. What makes a software good? A good software, well, ask yourself, what makes a good car? A good car means that the car can go fast, it behaves uh, the way that the driver expects it to behave, the control is good, the comfort is good, it gives you the bang for the buck, um, I mean, economical to own, uh, it's not just uh, economical to purchase, but uh, economical to maintain in the long run. Uh, the car is maintainable, something that we should not forget. The car is maintainable. What happened after one year? Uh, what, uh, how about two years, three years? Can I upgrade this car? Uh, can I improve the quality of the car when I go outside? Uh, uh, to go to any of the workshop, can I purchase the, 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 the parts easily? And uh, can the uh, car specification be improved? Can I improve the comfort of the, the car interior on my own? This is all aspects of maintainability of a car, not just economically, you know? And of course, the car has to be secured. Well, the car can be safe on the first day you drive it out from the showroom. Um, how about one year later? Do you think the car should be still safe? How about five years later? Six years later? Seven years later? Uh, do you expect the car to be still safe? So this is an aspect of um, security, a part of maintainability. Yeah. So in likewise in software, a software should be maintainable. When uh, there is a change in a business environment, there's a change in organization, the software can be upgraded. Imagine a software that you purchase from a vendor, vendor cannot be upgraded at all one year later or two years later. And the only thing you can do is to redevelop a totally new software. Can you imagine that? Should that happen? No, that is not acceptable at all. The software should be maintainable. Or what if? That software can only be maintained by the vendor. Your IT department has no idea how to maintain it. Acceptable? No, yeah. So that's one software quality that people always overlook, uh, but it's very important for operation. And of course, other quality of software are dependable. You can trust the software. Well, um, when you fly on an airplane, the pilot may go into autopilot mode when it is up in the air at certain attitude, right? And the, slide, the, and the pilot, co-pilots may be taking nap. Of course, one person should be awake while uh, the plane is on autopilot mode. But we are all putting our lives on the computer, right? It shows that we trust that the, that the computer can, can do the job. So that's what we mean by dependability, reliability. Yeah, it's safe. We can entrust our life, our our money to it. Yeah, um, and of course uh, the software should be efficient. You wouldn't want to use a software you have to wait for a tremendously long time. And the other thing is acceptability. Um, the software should be doing what it's supposed to do. Uh, it may be fast, it may be reliable, but it's not doing what you want it to do. So that is not acceptable, yeah? Or maybe it's in a language that you cannot understand at all. Okay, these are uh, essential attributes of software. 
which are pretty much a common sense. You know, if you compare it to a car, um, it's pretty much the same thing. So, software engineering is about no longer art, but to engineer software by process, not because uh, the quality of the software is good because the program is good. No, we don't want that anymore. We want the quality of the software to be good because of the process that produces the software, regardless of who the individual programmers are, of which company is developing it. It's because they follow the process, the quality of the software is assured to a certain degree, acceptable degree. So software engineering ensure, ensures that happen. In software engineering, we must always remember the following. Good software is due to suitable, good process, not individual. Software system, a part of doing the function, maybe to purchase uh, a flight, uh, airlines ticket online or to reserve uh, a hotel room. This, these are functions, yeah? Or maybe you just want to find out uh, direction to a location in Ipo or in Kuala Lumpur. Maybe you want to visit this particular cafe that your friend recommends you. Uh, that's, the, that's the function of the software, yeah? Um, not just function, but the quality of the software. Maintainable, dependable, efficient. Yeah. Um, this is a, this is what we mean, what we meant by quality or attributes. A software should be driven by what? The quality of the software should be driven by what? When, if you want to build a software, you, you need a reference, right? Uh, refer to what? We must have specification. Everybody must refer to specification. The specification is about the requirement, it's about the design, the solution to resolve the requirement. So a, a software must be driven by specification. And why is this good? Imagine if you are a project manager, maybe you're working for Petronas, you, you, are, you are put in charge of uh, managing an IT project. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you come from IT background or non-IT background, one thing for sure, you must make sure that the requirements, the solution are documented in specification. This way, you can ensure everybody in the team, regardless of which company, which vendor, which department, which business unit, which academia, which industry are involved, they come and go, doesn't matter, you don't have to worry that much. Everything is in the specification, you can trace the progress by referring to specification. Whatever, go back to the specification. So the whole project should be driven by specification. Thus, having a good specification in the very beginning is important. And number four. Now, in um, economic work, yeah, uh, reuse is bad, right? Plagiarism is bad. Um, we don't like it. We want originality. Uh, art, we want originality. Um, but I beg to differ in software engineering. Software engineering loves reuse. Yeah, there's a, there's a rationale behind this. Reuse in software engineering is promoted because with reuse, we can save a lot of energy, time, resources to build a much more complex systems. Systems are modularized. You can reuse those components to build your software. So it helps you to save a lot of time, a lot of resources. That's why reuse is promoted in software engineering. Next, we will talk about misconception in software development. There are many misconceptions in software development because People likened software engineering with conventional soft, uh, uh, engineering, civil engineering, for example. It is in many ways similar, but in many ways not similar too. According to Pressman, software myths is described as a number of common beliefs that software managers, customers, and developers believe falsely. 
So there are three categories of myths uh, by manager, by customer, and by developer. So having the wrong belief is harmful because it may cause um, uh, activities, actions that are incorrect. It may cause processes that are incorrectly done. And uh, there are an, a dozen over of these myths that you can read by going to the following uh, URL. Since software engineering is a professional endeavor, therefore there is software, a set of software ethics attached to the profession. Software engineers are responsible to the profession and the society. Uh, we should not just be concerned with technical issues. We must have certain standards of behavior expected of ourselves. This is this should be driven by our, ourselves. And uh, these behavior standards of behavior uh, are given by um, bodies such as ACM, IEEE Code of Ethics. Um, the Code of Ethics according to ACM, IEEE contains eight principles uh, which uh, require stop engineers to be committed to making analysis, specification, design, development, testing and maintenance, basically the whole aspects of software development to be beneficial and a respected profession. So these are the eight uh, principles of software ethics. Number one, public interest beyond self. Number two, Take care of your client and employer's interest. Number three, product must meet the highest standards possible. Number four, be, be prudent, maintain integrity. Number five, promote ethical approach in the management of software development and maintenance. It should be part of the process. Number six, increase the reputation of software engineering profession. Number seven, be supportive towards your colleagues. And finally, number eight, to self, you must continuously upgrade yourself, your knowledge, your skills regarding the practice of your profession. And doing so, you must promote ethical approach. Software is a system. Everything around us runs in its own systems or is part of a system. There are physical systems, biological systems, engineering systems, automobile combustion systems, jet propulsion systems, photosynthesis system, plumbing systems, electrical systems, management systems, and computer systems. The automated teller machine that we regularly visit to withdraw cash is also a system. So what makes an artifact a system? We need to understand the system concept. In system concept, system is characterized as follows. Look at the figure. A system must have basic functions such as input, processing, and output. Input provides the data to be processed by the processing node, which generates the output that can be consumed by the user. In some systems, there will be additional elements such as feedback and control. For example, the computer mouse. The computer mouse is used to control the cursor and the cursor will provide feedback to the user. In concept of system, a system may be functioning inside a larger system. On the other hand, a system may contain subsystems which is smaller than the system within. Refer to figure 
on the right hand side at the bottom corner. A system can be open system such as the internet or it can be an adaptive system which is based on components. Information system is a system. It is a complex combination of computer hardware, software, data resources, procedures, and train people. Yes, an element of information system is the people. Together, the complex combination is used to capture, store, retrieve, transform, and disseminate information within an organization. An information system is therefore developed to provide solutions to enterprise needs and to solve problems. An AI and IS must be modeled according to the organization's processes. The organization depends on the IS or a suite of information systems for smooth operations. IS is complex. Why? It is because IS must model the organization's process. An organization would have many layers and there were there are many inputs and outputs in each layers. This therefore becomes a structurally complex input to output relationships between the different layers and inside each layer. Look at the figure on the bottom right. It shows a four level pyramid model of a typical organization. At the bottom, is the operations level, which is made up of business functions. A layer above is the knowledge level, which comprises office employees. A higher level is the management level, which comprises the middle management. They deal with tactical decisions. At the top is the strategic level, which comprises top executives. This layer deals with strategic concerns. An information system must be designed to fulfill the needs of each of the layers in the four level pyramid model. There are many types of information systems. In this course, we are going to look at two major categories, which are social technical systems and critical systems. Please distinct both types. Social technical systems is an approach to complex organizational work design that recognizes the interaction between people and technology in workplaces. The key word here is interaction between people and technology. Such a system is designed to optimize, to optimize the interaction. The interaction between social and technical factors creates the conditions for successful or unsuccessful organizational performance. Designing the social system and technical system must be in tandem so that the operation becomes smooth. Optimizing process adds value. This is called business process improvement. Now, suppose that a business is a group of data collected from the environment in order for the business organization 
to maneuver tactically and strategically. This information must be organized properly as much as possible because being organized, patterns can be revealed and actions can be inferred. To achieve such quality, we need to have suitable information system at every level of the four level pyramid model. Look at the figure on the left. At the operations level, we need business process automation to automate all the business functions. For the management level, as well as the knowledge level, we need business process management information system, which is used to make management more efficient this saves cost time. And finally, at the strategy level, we need business intelligence systems, which provides the top executives an overview of the overall operations so that they can make suitable strategic decision that determines the flow and directions of the company or organization. On the other hand, another type of information system is the critical systems. The focus is different. It does not focus on interaction between people and the technical system. Instead, the focus is on being highly reliable. A system must be highly reliable in all circumstances. This reliability must be retained. Even though the system may have been upgraded or modified without incurring prohibitive costs. Why critical system? Some systems are developed for circumstances where there are critical situations that can lead to failure. In such a system, the information system plays an important role to ensure safety. There are two strategies employed by critical system. 2A, fail operational, 2B, fail safe. What do you think is the difference between the two? For fail operational, let's imagine the flight control system. In a normal situation, the flight control system facilitates the pilots and the co-pilots. But what if the airplane meets an expected situation such as bad weather, which may result in the airplane flying in a less favorable situation. Should a flight control system in such a circumstance be shut off? Of course, no. The flight control system must operate in all circumstances, including degraded situations. This is called fail operational. Even at a point of failure, it is still operating. On the other hand, the other strategy is fail safe, whereby at a point of failure, the system, instead of resuming the operation, it immediately shuts down in order to minimize damage. For example, machinery systems. The operator often face, faces the hazard of injury or even deaths caused by machinery in factories. In case of a failure, the machine must immediately stop in order to provide safety to the environment, including the users. 
Another example is the ETS. ETS is the electrical train system. Now, what happened if the railroad is having some structural integrity or if there's an obstacle on the track? Must the system continue to run? Must the train continue to move or should it stop immediately? Stopping immediately seems to be a better option for safety. So as you can see, such a system is called fail safe. In the event of an expected situation leading to failure, the system should safely shut down. There are four types of critical systems that may employ the strategies of critical systems mentioned just now. These types are safety critical. The focus of safety critical is to ensure fail safe, fail safe operations. The goal is to minimize risk uh, that affects life, that causes injury or damages to assets in the environment. Number two, mission critical system has a different emphasis. The emphasis is to ensure that the mission is completed at all costs. For example, your GPS is often used to provide direction so that the driver can get to a certain destination. Now, sometimes the, the driver may drive into a wrong junction or may take a wrong turn. In such a situation, the GPS does not continue with the original route recommendation. It adjusts immediately, automatically, in order to bring the driver back to the route. Only this we allow the mission to be completed. Number three is business critical. As the name suggests, such a system must ensure there will be no loss financially that will affect, of course, the integrity of the organization. Such a system is designed to minimize or to prevent business loss economic loss or reputation loss, but often ensuring in uninterruptible services. Last but not the least is security critical system. System design with such a priority ensures no loss of sensitive data to theft or accident. For example, banking system. Banking system has been designed in such a way that it is proof from possible tampering. Finally, we have reached the slide on the learning points. If anything, make sure that you have internalized the following. Software engineering is an engineering discipline of wholesome software production, professional software development must consider theories, methods, and tools in their profession. Number three, even though there are many types of software systems, the fundamental ideas of software engineering are always the same. Number four, technologists should be aware and avoid problems created by misconception in software development, i.e. software mates. Number five, software engineers shall commit to making software development a beneficial and respected profession as specified in Code of Ethics. An information system is a complex combination of computer hardware, software, data resources, procedure, and trained people to capture, store, retrieve, transform, and disseminate information within an organization. Remember, information system 
also includes people element in its design. Social technical system is one such information system whereby the interaction between people and technology in workplaces is an important approach. Number eight, a critical system, on the other hand, is a system which must be highly reliable and retain this reliability as they evolve without incurring prohibitive costs. With that, I would like to end this lecture. Thank you for having me and good luck in your studies.